So before we get down to the important business of raising some money for our school, Jody and Meredy asked me to talk a little bit about my journey as a teacher. And I think this simple poem, in its few lines, captures the inherent limitation of schooling, especially as it existed for me in 1970 when I started teaching in Minneapolis. So here is Ron Kirkey's poem called First Grade. Until then, Every forest was alive with wolves. We wanted to wear snowshoes all the time. Until then, we talked with water and wind. So, just who is that lady? Who is that woman with the gray breath? She's calling out our names and pointing to desks that we're going to occupy for the rest of our lives. Who is that lady with the gray breath? She's calling out names and pointing to the little desks that we'll occupy for the rest of our lives. It's fair to say, when I look back at teaching in Minneapolis for that decade, that I was that lady. I was the woman with the gray breath pointing to the desks. I had been told that strict approach was most effective to manage my classes. I had 40 students usually every year. So I followed the school standards to sort, to strip the students of their autonomy, to sort them, select them, coerce and manipulate, discipline, reward, punish, and finally in June to deliver them to their next grade level. After years, the lack of creative support had taken its toll. So one wintry afternoon, I went to the mall with my blues. And guess what? I didn't buy shoes. I found Krishnamurti. It's true. While perusing the shelves at my favorite bookstore, a book tumbled from a sale table onto the floor, splat in front of me. Education and the significance of life. I read, quote, many of us seem to think that by teaching every human being to read and to write, we shall solve our human problems. But this idea has proved to be false. The so-called educated are not peace-loving integrated people, but are responsible for the, the state of the world. After devouring that book, I felt an odd mix of elation and disequilibrium. Something resonated in my inner sensibilities. But I was also thrown off kilter. Alar I was filled with alarm and profound sadness and guilt. What had I been doing with my life? How could I have lived for three decades without considering these things? And what was this mischief-making illusion of the self that he kept referring to? My superficiality and stupidity floored me. How appallingly ignorant I felt. How little attention I had really given the world and what made it tick. The insanities of the Cold War had haunted me and sent us huddling in school basements. But I never, ever considered that the roots of such insanity were within me. Furthermore, I read, when you study and learn about yourself, there comes an extraordinary strength based on clarity, which can withstand all the nonsense of the establishment. The greatest and most pressing problem for every human is to have an integrated comprehension of life. I was transfixed, uprooted, extraordinary strength, Integrated comprehension of life? What, what was he talking about? Eventually, a coherency I had never known began to form, and I was ignited with possibility of teaching and learning from wholeness rather than fragmentation. It made sense that the deeper I understood myself, I also found the whole of humanity. As a, at a frustration, 
frustrating the low point in my career, I requested and was granted a year's leave of absence from my job. I traveled to India and had the very good fortune of meeting with Kay for a private conversation. At the end of our discussion, I wondered, should I return to Minneapolis and radicalize my school? <laughs> or should I move and apply to Oak Grove? He answered, you'll hit your head a lot less if you go to Ojai. <laughs> uh, did I say wall? You'll hit your head a lot less against the wall if you go to Ojai. So, I was euphoric after Mark Lee hired me. Nervous, unprepared as well. And Kay did not write a teacher's manual. He did not leave lesson plans. Um, he said it's the educators that need educating. And that was true for me. It seemed I needed to uneducate myself from my past conditioning and teaching practices. Krishnamurti said, to educate the educator means to look at our current state of the world, which is ourselves, and to begin there. To go far, start near. So thankfully, the staff explored issues and are still exploring those issues, as Meredith pointed to, with Krishnamurti during, those, during his annual visits to Ojai from 1980 to 85. And he helped me to recover a field of vision that had been neglected within myself. One year, we spent a whole month talking about trust. I experienced the power of looking and asking, a kind of learning that wasn't related to building knowledge. You might ask, after all these years, well, how could you stay so long? And how did it turn out about that hitting your head against the wall? Well, I found my people, you. I found my place here. And I found the junior high currently to feed that spirit in me and my colleagues, Ron and Deborah. A couple days a week for a few hours, I still teach, I still learn. I get to goof off with the junior high and consider a few serious topics with them as well, such as health and wellness, cultural conditioning, technology, nutrition, sexual health, rites of passage. Their very active state of metamorphosis brings levity and perspective to my world. And I look at them, I listen, I laugh, we ask questions, we see what happens. How fun is that? <laughs> I never dreamed I could be so lucky to find a place like this. My deep gladness in teaching and learning merged with the world's need for restoring itself through its proper care of its children. To have been given this gift, along with my fellow Oak Grove teachers, parents, and students, to flower and to inquire, to engage with deep understanding of what it means to be human, my, my heart is full, fuller than full with gratitude. Over the years, Oak Grove School has employed hundreds and hundreds of staff members. It's provided a safe and nurturing place for thousands of students. It's in its 40th year. Look, look at the numbers. And parents have been provided a place for support and to make friends. Truly, it's miraculous. It's a never-ending work in progress. It's a living organism with countless friends, such as each one of you here today. So I'd like to pause for a minute. I'd like to shift gears into our purpose for why we're here. So we're nearing the end of our program. And um, I'd like to just take a drink of water. You know, we're going to go now into
the aspect of asking you for a gift. 